feel like I just said that a while ago. Here we go again. Please take a seat. Well, you heard me. Uh, you heard me talk earlier. In fact, I even said later that I I threw Guy Rhodes under the bus with my remarks. But uh, Guy has put together a presentation that I think you're going to love. Um, the, we did tell him that he's got to get this done in like 15 minutes, but uh, he, he stretched it a little bit farther. <laughs> so, so it's it's going to be good. Uh, a lot of good memories, and uh, so here's Guy Rhodes. Welcome, welcome, Guy Rhodes. And it wasn't 15 minutes. Uh, NASA said 30 minutes. So, uh, a couple of uh, a couple of thoughts. Um, first of all, Gary called it a presentation. That's a he. Uh, that's not the right word for what you're going to see. Uh, I uh, went through my old GE stuff and I just grabbed a bunch of slides and made a bunch of slides. And so it's a, a bunch of loose thoughts. Uh, so don't hold me to uh, to uh, a presentation. Uh, I want to start by uh, <laughs> remarking about Gary's remarks. Uh, uh, he gave me far too much credit. Uh, when I learned that Gary was uh, available, uh, it was a no-brainer. I I knew how good Gary was and what a great performer he was, and uh, I would have had to have been an idiot to, uh, to not uh, bring him into our organization. So, uh, my, my good luck. Okay, here we go. Um, I dug back through uh, some GE stuff. Yeah, you, you want to keep that? Oh, I dug back through some GE stuff, and uh, you can, I'll let you read down through it. You can see who the CEOs were um, over the years. Um, and it very, it gets kind of complicated because at various times, uh, in addition to a CEO, GE had a president and a chairman of the board, and sometimes, usually the CEO was chairman of the board. But I uh, you, uh, outlined in red, this guy Owen Young back in 1922 uh, had 18 years and they came back in for three. So he's the longest uh, serving GE CEO. Uh, and then we have uh, Reed who came in with uh, twice with 15 years. Uh, the guy that we all know best, uh, Jack Welch, we'll talk about him a little bit later. Uh, had 20 years, and then Emil uh, came in with 16 years, and uh, it was probably about 15 and a half too many. <laughs> so anyway, now we got this guy, Colt, who uh, seems to be doing a decent job, but uh, as you all know, the G stock, the G stock is not what it used to be. All right, here we go. Uh, back in 1981, uh, Welch took over from Ray Jones, and uh, that is the monogram picture. And uh, it just so happens in that uh, particular issue, there's an article. I was at Specialty Motors. I was a marketing manager then, I guess. And uh, there was an article on the ceiling fan, and that was uh, one of the first applications for our ECM motor. And so they did an article on uh, the ceiling fans. It turned out to be a terrific business uh, for a few years. Uh, <clears throat> this is my favorite picture of Welch. Uh, you can't read it down at the bottom, but it says, as hard boiled as he looks. <laughs> and that, that is Welch. And, but anyway, he, uh, he grew the market, uh, G market value. From 12 billion to uh, over 400 billion dollars. I mean, a terrific performance. And I think most of you in this room are most familiar with Welsh's uh, tenure. Um, he made a lot of money for a lot of people in this room. And uh, I think we can be thankful for that. But anyway, 
I have a lot of wealth stories uh, that I'm not going to tell, but uh, I may tell one later. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, one thing about Welch, in my latter years, uh, I uh, had to go out to Fairfield, I guess, maybe two or three times a year to make presentations. And I, the presentations were, were, went one way or the other. He always made you feel really good or really bad. And there was no in-between. And uh, so when you left, you had one of those feelings. Uh, anyway, there we go with Welch. Uh, this is kind of an interesting slide. I don't know uh, whether you can read it, but I'm not going to try to walk through all of it. But it starts with the Broadway plant when it was built back in the 80s. And when the various plants came in, this guy, Manly Lord, headed up the fractional horsepower division, the first guy that uh, kind of took over uh, when uh, it, everything was centralized. And he started to decentralize the business. Uh, then uh, down here in 53, McKinnon showed up as the vice president of the, <clears throat> the component products division. And in 54, it was kind of reorganized a little bit. You can see here the departments that were part of it. Uh, and then some other plants were added. The component sales department <clears throat> was formed in 1960. It was called CSO in those days. It was a fallout of a general uh, company reorganization of the sales organizations. Um, in 68, CSO became a CSD, a department. Springfield plant was built in 1970. Uh, probably uh, one of the, had to be one of the greatest plants in the company. Um, is that right, Don? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it had great plant managers, too. Right, Don? Anyway, down here, and then uh, the last one I have on here is BCAM. Gary's already told me more about BCAM than, than he should have. That's right. No more stories. So, uh, but anyway, uh, BCAM was um, finally sold in 1994. Or, gee, the vested its share in BCAM. Uh, which is probably a good thing because it was never destined to be a great GE joint venture. It just began, I guess Gary had just too much control, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, moving on. Uh, how many of you have this book? Oh, terrific. This is a wonderful book, and uh, if you don't have it, uh, you can get it on Amazon. But Clovis Lincas, who was a terrific uh, motor engineer, um, he was a guy, he was a high-powered engineer that could bring uh, engineering down to layman's terms and um, uh, tell, uh, tell you how things worked without confusing you. But anyway, if you don't have that book, it's worth getting and reading. Terrific uh, history in that book. Um, here is a GE Motor uh, leadership lineup, uh, starting there with McKinnon when he came in um, from the corporate office as the vice president. Holt, Farnsworth, uh, Fenolio, uh, Van Williams, Watling, O'Brien, Rogers, and then uh, in 1998, I think it was 98, maybe it was 97, I guess in 98, Rogers moved the uh, headquarters to uh, Atlanta, and shortly after that, the company reorganized and combined his business with a business that Lloyd Trotter had, and uh, Trotter got the nod, and Jim left the company at that time. I can tell you a lot of stories about Jim Rogers, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Here's an interesting vintage picture that I brought out. This is Harold McKinnon um, in the center. And this, this guy is Bob Paxton, his boss. And here you have Car uh, Carl Moeller from AMD. Uh, don't know who that guy is. That's Fred Holt, who was general manager of uh, appliance control. Abe Martin from <coughs> Medic Motor. Jack Clarkson, special motor. And Carl Rennie, a special transformer. And Lyle Hodell, GPM. That was really the first group of general managers
managers uh, that were running the motor business. Um, this is the only picture I have of uh, of uh, only picture I have of uh, uh, division manager staff. Uh, you probably recognize some of these guys: uh, Dan Lovinger, Don Cochran, Jack Burgess, uh, Bob Farmgall, Bill Finolio, uh, Tom Beatty, Marcel Joseph, Dave Beaumont, Bill Ainer, Roger Gore, and Bill Siebel. Uh, a couple of those guys are no longer with us. Another early picture, that's McKinnon, third from the right, uh, left. McKinnon, third from the left, and uh, that was the CSO staff uh, in 1960 um, when CSO was formed. That's another group of early general man uh, di district managers, another group, I'm going to skip that. This is really the last group of district managers in 1986, and uh, shortly after that, we reorganized. Uh, sales organization. Uh, I was a district manager for uh, three years, I guess. Um, probably uh, one of the best jobs the company ever had. Um, you were away from uh, the central office. They didn't know what you were doing. And, uh, you didn't tell them. You didn't tell them anything you didn't have to. Um, it was almost as easy as being a plant manager. <laughs> so anyway, you can't read this, but it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Uh, it says, uh, this is um, Amalgamated District Managers of America, that's what that stands for. And these are the tenants. And, um, it says, be as obvious as possible when ahead of budget to divert headquarters attention away from those who are behind budget. Two, contribute to the steady flow of trivial and insignificant paperwork to keep headquarters occupied and prevent a flow in the opposite direction. <laughs> Do everything possible to get outgoing dial com and recom lines and uh, email um, baskets removed from headquarters offices while retaining such incoming facilities. Use at least a few words having more than four letters in all correspondence to headquarters in order to keep them confused. <laughs> Include at least one questionable item or omit one receipt from at least one expense account each month to give assurance that the auditors are attentive. <laughs> Add paragraph 47, subsection Y, suggesting revision to automobile and or lunch and expense policies to each monthly report. Continue to work for lower kickback assessments to headquarter managers for the retention of district managers on the payroll. And most importantly, place a, a prayer grass a blanket on a clean spot each morning for kneeling toward Fort Wayne and during the normal period of thanks and supplication. <laughs> anyway, it goes to show you how brilliant the district managers were. Uh-oh. Not moving, Nancy. I just answered it 15 minutes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's time down. Right out of time. I talked to you. Jose, you set the timer on. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, that's probably enough anyway. But he says getting started. CSD, we formed a commercial industrial sales organization, and it had marketing and, and sales, it had a trucking, oper trucking operation, and um, ISD transferred all of their OEM sales engineers to us, along with the accounts, and we also took over uh, the Canadian sales force uh, at that time, uh, so it got to be a fairly good sized organization. That's a picture of the Canadian sales guys. 
Um, Ash Ray Breakfast. We got to be famous for those at the air conditioning show, and uh, we'd get like 200, uh, maybe two, 250, 300 uh, customers, top customers attending, and uh, we did that for a number of years, and we were the envy of Emerson. Uh, we have the queen of breakfast, Sue Grossnickel here. <laughs> she, she planned most of those, and uh, uh, did a great job. I'm going to take an extra minute to tell a story on Welch. In 1995, the breakfast was in Chicago, and we talked Welch into coming out and being the uh, keynote speaker. So anyway, um, that, uh, that, and that night, the night before, we had Welch and Jim Rogers and myself and a couple of the top guys from Carrier for uh, dinner at the top of the Sears Tower. So I said to Jim, I said, I'm going over to Sears Tower and look things over so I know what's going on. You want to go with me? He said, no. I said, no, you go ahead. So I go over there, and when I'm over there, I get a call from Jim, and he said, well, Welch is coming in early. I got to go pick him up. Okay, so um, I go wandering around the Sears Tower, look everything over, and I go back. And um, Jim had told me I had to pick up the carrier people because he had Welch. So I picked up the carrier um, people went into the Sears Tower and they're like, I don't know, 20, 20 elevators or something like that there. Went up, Welch and Rogers are, are already there. So we had a nice dinner and on the way out, uh, we're walking down the hallway to the coat room and Welch, there's a swinging door into the kitchen. He swings the door open, he looks in and says, all clear. And so we got our coats and we left. And I said to Jim later, I said, what was, what was Welch doing? Were that all clear? He said, oh, he said, I had a terrible time. He said, I should have gone with you. He said, I got to the Sears Tower with Welch, and he said, all I could see were elevators everywhere. I had no clue which elevator went up to the Sears Tower. And he said, I got on the wrong elevator about three or four times. <laughs> and if you know Welch, he's not very patient. <laughs> so anyway, he said, we finally got up there, and we're walking down, they didn't have anybody to take the coats. We're walking down the coat room, and as we go past the swing door of the kitchen, some guy comes out, swings the door, hits Welch, almost knocks him over. <laughs> and so that's why he swung the door open. So, uh, anyway, uh, that's, that's the only Welch story I'll tell. <laughs> we, it, incidentally, at that, uh, you remember, Sue, we had, I've forgotten who this. Well, Welch was a speaker, but the year before we had that ventriloquist monkey. And uh, as I was introducing things, I mentioned the ventrolo ventriloquist monkey. And Welch pops up, everybody in a place could hear him. He pops up and says, yeah, and this year he said, I'm their ventriloquist monkey. <laughs> The last really big get together was a uh, CSD reunion in 2010. And uh, I laid out the program so that people didn't really know who the speakers were. A history professor, an elex celebrity, a snowbird and renowned consultant, a regal sales maker, a real insider, and a Charlie Wilson protege. Um, that history professor was Dick Kirk. He knew more about the motor business than, than anybody I ever knew. An Elex celebrity was Terry Gouch. And that brings on another story. <laughs> the reason I, I gave him that uh, name is uh, Terry was uh, in charge of the customer service organization at one period of time. And uh, the Elex, are there any Elex ladies here? No, a few, they're good. So anyway, um, I, a year before, I, I think I went up to Omaha, and I took Sandy with me to the Elex convention. Well, on the way back, Sandy said, you're never going to attend one of those without me. <laughs> anyway, Terry went to one, and uh, the ladies were wild. Uh, they had t-shirts made, and across, they had a G laser stripe across the top, and it says, the power that brings good things to life. That's a joke. 
<laughs> anyway, there were a couple of ladies wandering around, and they had around their neck um, a big loop, and they had a big breast. There were two of them. And they stood together, and it looked like a pair. It looked like a pair. <laughs> anyway, Terry got his picture taken in between those two ladies. It got published in the GE Works News. <laughs> A lot of people went berserk. <laughs> Terry had to issue pu a public apology for that. That's why he got the Elix. <laughs> uh, renowned consultant is, was Dick uh, Schwartz. Um, a Regal sales maker was, uh, I can't remember the name, who we had from uh, Regal Beloit to talk. A real insider was Audrey. Uh, never could get her to let her hair down and tell some inside stories. Uh, and the last one, a Charlie Wilson protege, was Bill Finolio. And the reason I gave him that title is he started in the motor business, went to the top, as did Charlie Wilson. Wilson started way down in GE and went to become president of GE. So uh, that's where all those names came from. Uh, that's Dick and Audrey. Uh, I ran across this. Uh, somebody talked me into this. It seemed like a foolish thing at the time, but it turned, out, it turned out to be okay. But it was a paintball fight in some building around here. And uh, you can see today there's Sue Gross, Nickel, Jim Spaulding, Dave DeSantis, Al Crisman, Don Crack, and Mike Wendell, and Tom DeLong were all part of that. But we had this crazy paintball thing. And I guess, you know, I guess in those days we called it team building. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to flip through these. The reason I, the reason I, I flip through those is uh, if you have mementos, uh, I think we, it would be nice if we could collect as many G mementos as possible and maybe turn them into Tom DeLong. Uh, and we'll try to get the GE Electric Works to put a display of GE Mementos there. I, I think it would be nice, it would be a long-term thing for GE Mementos there. So if you have any, uh, you want to give them up, why, uh, that would be a good cause. This is an old picture of uh, one of the uh, business courses. There were a lot of them, as you know. Uh, the most famous guy in that was uh, Bill Rutledge, who uh, became SMD general manager and went to GPM. Then went to Emerson and became a vice chairman. And this is just another big class. Uh, I'm going to go through these fast. Uh, this is an old one of uh, GPM. That's Lyle Hodel, Bill Boggess, Pete Kuttner, and Lee Beard, um, Gene Henry, Swagger. Uh, this is Bill Boggess's retirement. Uh, he gave me my first manager job. This is Bill. That's me, and that's Don Nelson on the other side, and uh, Don Cochran, who replaced Bill Brothers. And that goes back to 1968, and that goes back a long time. Spe special order, Vince Gregg was general manager then. He left and went to uh, Fines Control. Um, that's a special order when Glenn Heiner was uh, general manager. This was one of our plant visits uh, when I was at Specialty Motor. That was me and Bill Fanola and John Bussey, Paul Deal, uh, Frank Conley on the end. Uh, George Wright, many of you. How many knew George Wright? Uh, he was a, re a real timer, an uh, old timer, and he was a great, great guy. That's George in the middle. He retired in, uh, I think it was 1989. That's SMD staff Mar with Marcel in 81. Um, this is the engineering staff. Uh, these are just random pictures that I was able to find in 83. Uh, 39 frame engineering. Uh, Mike Litch headed that up. This young guy here uh, with just a mustache is Nasser. <laughs> Uh, and there's Nasser again, right next to, as you might imagine, he's right there shoulder to shoulder with uh, David Geneva Watling. 
Um, I put together uh, about a six-page summary of all the changes in the motor business starting in about 1981 when Welch took over, and it's about six pages long. I've got a copy of it here, but um, how many would be interested in having that, a copy of that? Okay. Hang <laughs> on. All right, I'll tell you what. Uh, that's going to... That's going to make it. That's going to make it. That's going to make it easy. Uh, just tell me who you are afterwards, and I'll let you do that. I got, I got a small sample of paper here that we have. And uh, this is a slide that Gary already used. Uh, and another, another thought on this slide. A couple of people have mentioned uh, persons who have since passed, um, if you want to uh, let me know when people have uh, passed, I'll add them to this list and we'll kind of keep track of it. I, it only goes back, I tried to do it to about, uh, oh, there's a mistake there, that's 2010 CSD reunion, but, um, so anyway, if, if you do, send them to me and I'll add them to this list and we'll try to keep track of it. Since, since Nasser is the guy in the pictures, um, <laughs> Kathy told me that I did a really great job of avoiding all these pictures. I don't think I was in a single one. So. <laughs>